Everyone's talking about Curry and his patented night-night celebration, but while it's only summer league and golf season for Steph, three young phenoms for the Golden State Warriors are growing their games in Vegas. Moses Moody dropped 34 points, earning himself a day off in Sunday's game against San Antonio. In that outing against the Spurs, James Wiseman and Jonathan Kaminga made some youthful mistakes, but just getting reps under their belts was evidently important to their development. This video shows you how Moody, Wiseman, and Kaminga are performing in the Summer League and breaks down every reason making the Warriors even scarier for the 2022-23 season. While Jonathan Kaminga couldn't make a free throw to save his life, he and the number two overall pick from 2020 in James Wiseman led the Warriors to a 9-0 run in the final few minutes of the game in a comeback effort. The Warriors Summer League roster isn't the most well-rounded, but up-and-comers in Moses Moody, James Wiseman, and Jonathan Kaminga will be valuable contributors next season, and these three guys getting as many shots as they want in a competitive NBA 5-on-5 five -five environment is quietly a very important factor to the Warriors' chances in the upcoming campaign. If the Warriors are going to repeat as champions next year, it's absolutely critical that their young pieces take the next step and morph their games to the point where they're consistent, valuable role players to the team's rotation. On Sunday, it was the 19-year-old phenom in the G League Ignite product Jonathan Kaminga being the center of attention for the opposing defense and absolutely dominating going downhill and drawing fouls. While he did shoot just 7 of 18 from the charity stripe, JK did hit the game-winning free throw and ultimately carried the Doves to a victory with 28 points, going 10 for 22 from the field, hauling down 7 boards and dropping 4 dimes. Jonathan has a long way to go with his development in terms of how he manages the pace of the game when working off the bounce, along with controlling his ego. On an off day for Moody, and we'll get to Moses later on, I wanted to give credit to Mac McClung as well for stepping up with 22 points. Meanwhile, in James Wiseman's first pro game in over a year, he was very solid. It's great to see this man healthy first and foremost, but in terms of what he did well, Wiseman's rotations defensively were swift, he blocked two shots, which both came in the first quarter, he was moving well up and down the floor on that previously bad knee, catching lobs around the bucket, getting up and down the court in a blur with his long strides, and using his stature and wingspan to his advantage. In Wiseman's first action in 15 months, Mann posted 11 points, 2 blocks, going 5 for 7 from the field, even stretching it out to knock down a 3-pointer. That was all while being on a minutes restriction, he only played 19 in the game, so if you're a Warrior fan, you should take Wiseman's debut as a decent sign. From an opposing Raptor fan's perspective, I think my team has a decent shot at making a run in the East next season, and former Warrior Otto Porter Jr. should help us out. But envisioning a world where we get a 2019 Finals rematch between the Raps and Dubs, and I can't help but be damn scared of the pieces developing in this Warrior system. When you combine three very young players with unlimited upside, like lottery picks in Kaminga, Moody, and Wiseman, with what the reigning champions already have going for themselves, and what you get is a potentially untouchable force in 2023. History tends to repeat itself, and it all starts in the front office with Bob Myers, who continues to make this Golden State organization the most prestigious one among all 30 teams. What the Warriors do, all 29 other teams try to copy, whether they'll admit it or not. Now, by drafting three non-guards in 2020 and 2021, President Bob Myers is again shaking up the traditional realms of basketball. Moses Moody may be the Warriors' best young talent of them all. Draymond Green and Stephen Curry have both spoken very highly of him, calling for Moses to get more media attention, and also saying he's one of the most mature rookies they've ever seen. Moses is coming off a very solid rookie year, as the 6'6", 205-pound wing was the 14th overall pick in 2021's draft because of his smooth handle and bucket getting off the bounce for his size. While Moody's a natural small forward, the high arc he gets on his jumper and all around the feel for the game that he has out on the perimeter makes the guy resemble a player in the backcourt. The upside that Moses has shown off defensively is also special, as watch how he perfectly rotates over for two blocks in the Warriors' opening summer league game. 
Additionally, the footwork and rebounding shown off from Moody on Friday was no fluke, as while he only got 12 minutes per night over 54 games played in his rookie season, Moses made 40 of his total 110 three-pointers, a solid 36.4% in 2021-22. Per 36 minutes, Moody averaged 13.5 points and 5 rebounds per game. Overall, this kid's maturity, poise on the court, and raw shot-creating talent, all while being just 20 years of age, makes him yet another warrior rising prospect that you have to keep an eye on, and if he elevates into the Paul Pierce-esque prototype that his ceiling entails, we're looking at another dynamic offensive weapon to draw gravity for the Warriors system in the product of Arkansas's Moses Moody. Then there's the Warriors' most coveted free agent signing of 2022's offseason, former Milwaukee Buck and Sacramento King Dante DiVincenzo. A fan favorite when he played with Milwaukee, Bucks fans had high hopes for DiVincenzo, but injuries ultimately got the best of him. Apparently, it took just a single phone call from Stephen Curry and Draymond Green to convince Dante to join on, and I have to say, his addition was much needed. Gary Payton II and Automatic moving on were big losses, as they were big pieces to the Warriors' perimeter defense and bench bucket getting. Dante's maybe not the defender that Payton or Porter Jr. are, but he is an instant spark plug off the pine who's going to relieve some of the pressure that Jordan Poole gets for the second unit. Over 66 games during his third pro season in Milwaukee back in 2021, DiVincenzo was a near 40% three-point shooter. He started every game he played in for the eventual champions, being one of the Bucks' most reliable high-volume weapons. Now asked to do a lot less in the Bay Area, DiVincenzo will have to prove he can bounce back from his injuries to play at a high level, but this sort of reminds me of Andrew Wiggins joining on and having to do less. What should be the next offseason move for the Warriors? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters by September 21st earn a free jersey, the top 3 earn a free shoe, 2 shoutouts from my last vid and the previous one go to Thierry and Swoo. I hope you have a great one, DFlow signing off.